What's up guys, this is Quadron. I'm bringing you a guide to the Reaver. This is part one. I'm going to be talking about the loadouts that I have for the Reaver, the ones that I like the most, and uh, the different possible loadouts and their uh, specialties that they have. Uh, this is I'm going to be posting this video up to my YouTube channel called Quadron TV, where I'm going to be posting lots of PlanetSide 2 content, so be sure to subscribe for all kinds of uh, PlanetSide 2 goodies and videos and all that stuff. So. Uh, let's go ahead and talk t about the air-to-air -air setup. Let me go ahead and just begin with the basic setup on the weapons with nothing attached so that you get an idea of what is available and what you start with. And, uh... So this this is the basic starting setup. You've got the M20 Mustang, external and external afterburner tanks. Uh, these basically almost double. They give you 80% extra fuel, so that you can burn instead of about like five or six seconds, you can burn for about 11 seconds, uh, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so let's go into the certifications and see what's available for the Reaver. Um, and we'll start at the top and work our way down. And this is I'm going to talk about the air to air set up here. So first of all you want to get your acquisition timer on probably the first at least three levels. That's probably one of the first things you want to get just because it knocks three minutes off and it's only like 41 thirds. That's that's really good. The next thing you want to get immediately after that is the decoy flares. The decoy flares are going to give you the ability to break lock-ons which are going to be really important for getting away in air-to-air -air combat. Um, and I can't express enough just to how important that is. Um, the SCAT radar, uh, we'll get to that when we get to the air to ground system. The ejection system, which to me is, I would rather have something that keeps me in the air rather than keeps me alive after I get shot out of the air. Because I would rather actually keep my reaver alive because it costs resources and there's a timer on it and you can't really replace the reaver as much. So, the fire suppression system. Uh, allows that if you're in red, you're on fire, it'll buff your health of your aircraft actually back into the green again, extinguishing any fires when activated, and it allows, basically, it gives you an extra, I don't know, like, 5 or 10% health on your aircraft, so you can take a few more bullets before you go down, and also allows you to get your speed back up, because your speed goes down when you go down into the red. Um, so, defense slot. Um, well, I guess, okay, so basically... Fire, fire suppression system versus decoy flares. What's going to be better? The decoy flares are going to keep you alive a lot longer than the fire suppression system and more often. So I definitely recommend the decoy flares. It's only 100 for the first level, 200 for the second level, and I do not recommend getting any of the other levels as they only take 5 seconds off and most dogfights are going to be over before 25 seconds is up. So don't go up above the first level. Uh, defense slot. I have vehicle stealth upgraded. If you're going to be doing air-to-air, -air, you're basically going to want two things, either vehicle stealth or potentially composite armor. Um, I would lean to say that the composite armor is going to be a little better on the air-to-ground uh, because you're going to get less damage from small arms, and flak damage will also keep you alive if you're going to be hovering more. But if you're going to be dogging around in air-to-air, -air, it's far more likely that you're going to not be getting hit by air-to-ground stuff as much more by lock-on missiles, etc., etc. So, getting the first three levels of vehicle stealth, I think, is a really good idea. I don't have the third level yet, but I'll get that soon. And then save the fourth level for a lot further down the road, because it's a thousand certs. That's a, it's a pretty hefty investment for only another quarter second. Okay, so let's talk about the performance slot. There are three primary airframes that you can upgrade your Reaver with. There's the dogfighting airframe, which increases turn power, roll power, and overall agility. Hover stability airframe, which basically Im increases your vertical thrust, your hovering, natural hovering power, and your air braking ability, uh, which can be really useful potentially as well. Uh, and racer high speed airframe, which increases your overall top speed by a roughly 20 kilometers per hour when maxed out. Um, Let's uh, talk for just a second about the fact that m there's a lot of people out there who are recommending the Racer High Speed Airframe. You know, they, they're kind of re reasoning that you know the dogfighting airframe doesn't really improve your your stats that much. So I I just think the Racer High Speed Airframe is just a lot better. 
And I actually disagreed with them, and I went with the dogfighting airframe. And I'm pretty glad I did, but l I'll tell you about that in just a second. And uh, let's, let me explain why people really like the Racer high-speed airframe. The primary reason being that if you had a lock-on and a missile was coming after you, if you had Racer high-speed level 3 and you had the afterburner, you could potentially outrun that missile in a you just fly in a straight line and just get out of there as much as po as fast as possible and you could you know the missile would just miss because it would blow up before it got to you now that is no longer possible with the afterburner nerf that the reaver got um, you, I guess you might occasionally do that but there's no guarantee that it's going to work anymore um, and let me explain why that there was in the recent patch that happened like last week around 1213 or 1215 I'm not sure what day it happened but uh, the reaver overall speed was reduced by about 20 kilometers per hour which is a pretty big deal in my opinion um, it was a huge nerf to the reaver um, and then also at the same time they actually reduced the momentum that the, the reaver carried after you disengaged the, the afterburner you used to kind of slowly your speed used to slowly dwindle down from from hitting the afterburner and now the speed actually zeroes down right back to the cruise speed very short after after you hit the afterburner but so basically before with racer high speed airframe 3 you used to be able to carry your momentum and keep your speed up for about you know five or six seconds eight seconds ten seconds and you'd be able to outrun that lock-on missile now you can't really keep your speed up at that high really high speed anymore and basically you can't run away from your those lock-ons anymore so let me explain why I decided to go with dogfighting airframe. The The reason I went with dogfighting airframe is because I would rather turn and face them in a fight because if I can just outright kill them, why do I have to run away? So rather than being, I guess, a coward, I guess, I went with the more man up build. I just want to kill their ass. So just why not just actually turn, face them, get on their tail and finish them off before they can even have a chance to do anything in return. So what I recommend, if you're going for an air-to-air -air fighter, definitely get the dogfighting airframe. And there's a number of reasons to get the dogfighting airframe. First of all, you're going to want to get it because it incre increases your turn rate. Basically, it takes about 21 and a half seconds to complete a full rudder turn, just using your yaw, like your A and your D buttons. But with the rudder turn speed increase, it actually goes down to a roughly 11 seconds. So it basically cuts your time in half, or you can think of it also as a 100% speed upgrade, depending on if you're, cause you're going from 11 seconds to like 21 seconds. It's like 90 something percent. So it's, it's an incredibly useful uh, ability for turning around quickly. Now, it, one thing that's confusing is that it does not increase your pitch up and your pitch down speed. So it takes roughly five seconds for each ESF, no matter which ESF you have, to do a full 360 degree turn uh, using like your, just like going straight up and down and like, like tilting your wing sideways and going straight up and down. Um, but using the yaw, it takes much, much longer. But if you throw the yaw into the pitch up, you can reduce your overall turn, s turn time from five seconds to 4.7. And that's doesn't sound like much, but increasing your turn speed by 6% is incredibly useful so I do think you turn much quicker using the dogfighting airframe and it's a pretty big advantage and so if you're wanting to just man up take people head on dogfighting airframe is one I recommend uh, one thing I will say for hover stability airframe is uh, I've had I have a buddy who uses that uh, is that it basically allows you to do your reverse air maneuver so if you're someone who dogfights with using the air reverse air maneuver, the hover stability airframe will really accentuate the reverse maneuver significantly. It'll also allow you to uh, stop faster. So you can do some harder turns, pull up behind a hill, and uh, you know the person will blow by you. Or if they're right on your tail, you might be able to stop faster and they'll blow by you anyway because you just slow down. Then again, they'll also oftentimes just run right into the back of you if you just stop. So I personally, again, really like the dogfighting airframe for air to air. Um, let's go ahead and move down. Now, as far as dogfighting goes, the M20 Mustang is not bad. I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions is that the M M20 Mustang sucks. It's, it's really not that bad. The thing you gotta keep in mind with the M20 Mustang is you have 50 bullets in that magazine. And whereas in the 
Uh, Vortec, you only got 25. So basically, you have double the bullets in this magazine. And on top of that, you can get it up to an additional 25 bullets. The Vortec, you can only add an additional 13 bullets. So this is a significant uh, upgrade in terms of continuous fire. But let me explain why that's good and bad. Because the bullets come out slower, which requires your nose of the aircraft to be pointed directly at the enemy for a longer period of time, which takes more skill. Um, whereas the Vortec, all the bullets come out really quickly, so all you have to do is get the, the nose crosshair on the enemy, unload your magazine, now you're free to do your turns, bail, you know, dodge for a second while it reloads, come back at the enemy again. So that's one nice thing about the Vortec, but also one nice thing about the M20 Mustang is you just continuous fire, longer continuous fire. Notice that I have not spent much time upgrading because the M20 Mustang really doesn't require much up for upgrades. Um, if I were to use the M20 Mustang, I would say upgrade the magazine size. That would be the first thing. At least get the first three levels of the magazine size and also get the, uh, some ammo capacity. But the great thing about the M20 Mustang is that it comes with so much ammo by comparison. Like, you start with 550 ammo already on the M20 Mustang. And the upgrade just makes it so you're getting such insane amounts of ammo. You can get 1150 for final ammo capacity. On the Vortec, by comparison, you start with 225 and you go up to like 400 and then you go up to 425, 450, 475. So the Vortec is just much more ammo restrictive so you need to be putting lots of ammo into it uh, to keep your stuff out in the field. So the M20 Mustang allows you to stay out in the field longer, uh, longer continuous fire which can be really useful against galaxies and liberators but isn't quite as effective I think against ESFs because they're so much more dodgy, they move around so much that it's hard to keep your train on them for longer periods of time. So, let's go ahead and move down the vor uh, to the Vortec. The Vortec is basically a 25 round burst machine gun. It's almost, think of it almost like a shotgun, but not quite. It's almost like an Uzi, maybe, where it's just like, and they're all gone, and then moving on. So, what do you want to get on the Vortec? Initially, the very first thing you want to get is the maximum ammo capacity. You want to get at least a third level of that because that bumps you up to 300 rounds instead of 225. Uh, that's a huge upgrade. Now, the second thing you want to get is the infrared optics. It's only 50, but it allows you to see so much better. At night, you can see aircraft in the sky better, and you can also see ground targets significantly better, such as infantry, and the Vortec actually tears through ground targets. All you have to get is uh, like three bullets on an infantryman and he's dead. So I definitely highly recommend the Vortec for uh, killing infantry quickly. But the tricky part about the Vortec is that it is really hard to aim at infantry because they're so tiny. So uh, just keep all those things in mind. Vortec can work well against infantry. And it's also decent against tanks if you hit them, drill them straight in the back. But it's not great. It takes like probably four or five magazines to actually take out a tank from behind, which is not ideal because you have to be hovering there when the tank can turn around and shoot at you or friendly tanks can shoot at you or whatever. So it's definitely not the best against tanks, but it's okay against infantry, but it's great against aircraft. So um, switching, looking down through, what do you want to get? You want to get through three levels of ammo, get your infrared, don't get zoom. Zoom is kind of a waste, and I, I learned that. Um, then you're going to want to get magazine size. You want to just upgrade your magazine size if you're going to be serious about air-to-air, -air, you want to get Vortec magazine size up to the 1,000 level. And this adds 13 rounds to your magazine, gives you up to 38, which almost gives you probably, what, a 30 or 40% DPS boost increase, so you don't have to reload as often. Uh, and 38 rounds is capable of shooting an ESF down from 100% health down to dead all in one burst. So, definitely get your 38 round upgrade on the Vortec. It's insane uh, for taking out aircraft. Probably the best weapon overall. Now, let's talk about the M30 Mustang. And this is kind of the surprise in the category of air-to-air -air combat. It, this is basically a shotgun. Don't listen to the thing that says, you know, fire several explosive rounds in a single shot. Well, I guess if all rounds are explosive, then yeah, I guess they're explosive. But yeah, it's not really explosive rounds. So, what it is, is it's a shotgun that shoots about 20 pellets out in each burst. 
and it's capable of killing infantry in one hit if you're close, uh, two hits if you're a little bit further away, or three hits if you're even further away. So it's actually incredibly useful uh, for taking out infantry. I've like the first time I unlocked this, I went on like a 40 kill streak, just cleaning up infantry. It's incredibly good against infantry in the hands of a skilled pilot. Um, you're gonna want to get uh, first three levels of ammo. Fourth, fourth, and fifth levels, like you all, you don't use that much ammo out of this gun. This gun's ammo lasts a long time, especially early on when you have a very limited magazine size. That's the thing you're gonna want to focus on. The magazine size, you only get three rounds to start with. And the thing about th this is that three rounds is not that much. But if you start adding the additional rounds, you add one round, two round, three rounds, four rounds, all of a sudden you've increased your magazine size by 125% and also increased your overall DPS by close to 100%. Um, I've never done the calculations, but it's got to be close to 100% if you're increasing the magazine size by 125, especially since the reload time is really long. Yeah, don't get the reload speed. This like only reduces the reload speed by 10% when you can increase the magazine size. The magazine size is going to be 10 times better than the reload speed upgrades. I don't even know why they have these in here unless you can increase the reload speed by like 100% or something like that because you're increasing the magazine size by such a larger percentage. So in terms of air-to-air -air combat, Mustang M30 Mustang is actually fairly capable. Uh, you have to get right up on them. And so if you're going to be using the Mustang M30 for the air-to-air -air role. I would I would use it with the gotta go fast build, I would call it, and uh, that means, I, I'll, I'll show that in a second, but it, it uh, it's a pretty cool idea for a build anyway. So, and then let's go to the last big air-to-air -air item, the Tomcat air-to-air -air, uh, missile pods. So, basically, if you're gonna be using the Tomcat air-to-air -air missile pods, you're going to want to get ammo first, at least the first three levels, because they're really cheap, and then you're going to want to get lock-on time. Lock-on time is going to provide really significant DPS boosts by decreasing the amount of time you have to be on the missiles before you can switch back to your machine gun. So, in general, you're going to want to use your Vortec in air-to-air, -air, unload your magazine in your Vortec, while the Vortec is reloading, bring up your air-to-air -air pods, and if you have reduced lock-on time it, by 15%, that's a pretty significant margin. Lock on quicker, launch your missile, switch back to the Vortec right after it on uh, it reloads. Do two more, mi like basically do two more rounds of the Vortec, and then switch back to the missile pods because the missile pods take several seconds to reload. So you can get two magazines off with your Vortec, or one elongated magazine if you can't. And by then, most likely. You've already killed them with your first burst of magazine, followed by an air-to-air, -air, followed by two additional magazines of Vortec. You should have killed them by now, but if you didn't, you can switch back to your Tomcat, which will be reloaded by then, and finish them off once more. So, I don't think you should get any infrared optics or zoom optics. They're not; pl they're pretty much pointless. I got this one because it was only one cert, but uh, you don't really need those for aircraft in general. Um, so that's my air-to-air -air build. I, I personally think the best build for air to air is going to be for without a doubt the vortex with the infrared optics magazine size and ammo and then you're going to want to either have after uh, afterburner or tomcat air to air missiles zeus my dog's barking like crazy apologize guys okay so basically what you're going to want to have for your air to air setup if this if you want to be the ultimate air to air pilot uh, straight up you're going to either want two builds. Vortec Rotary with air-to-air -air missiles where you switch between them using your machine gun as much as possible and your air-to-air -air pods as much as possible. That's going to do the highest DPS overall. And on here you're going to want to get your zoom, lock on time, and ammo. And then as far as air-to-air -air picks, you're going to want your decoy flares, your vehicle stealth to prevent lock-ons, and your dogfighting airframe. This will give you the best setup for air to air. Now let's go ahead and switch to my air to air or my air to ground build. Uh, well, first, first before that, let's go ahead and finish my got to go fast build, the afterburner bitches build that I've got here. Okay, so basically, you utilize your external afterburner tanks, and with, I haven't really completed this build yet because I want to get the 
maximum high speed airframe uh, level with this build and basically the idea is that you can catch up to people and finish them off with either the shotgun or the Vortec. Uh, the shotgun must M30 Mustang is actually pretty good at close range. You can do almost entirely kill an aircraft in one little bump 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 shot of the uh, M30 so it's actually pretty good if you can get close to them but if you're f too far away you're not going to do hardly anything. So that's why the gotta go fast build I think would be really good with it. Um, now as far as uh, the effectiveness of whether I think this one's better or this one's better, I really think that both can be just as good. Um, I would say this one's going to be better for a noob because the air to air missiles allow you to get more hits in initially, but the Vortec rotary is really where your highest DPS is going to be at if you can practice more. So, uh, this is really annoying. I keep getting shot by people. It's distracting. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so let's talk about air to ground for just a minute. Uh, and then that'll be the loadouts video. Okay, so my air to ground setup is with the M30 Mustang, and I've got again the infrared optics on it, magazine size and ammo. And then I've got rocket pods, and rocket pods basically are are they used to do, have a bigger splash damage, but now they have very little splash damage. You have to hit infantry almost directly on. And about six rockets will kill someone if you hit if you're hitting them really good. If you're not hitting them directly on, it's going to be eight. And if they're like a heavy assault, it's going to take almost twelve rockets to kill someone. It's it's getting kind of insane, especially if they have the flak armor. It's it's getting very difficult to kill people uh, with the rocket pods. And for that reason, I don't know if I would recommend rocket pods for killing infantry. I mean, it does work. Don't get me wrong. You keep pounding people, they'll die eventually. Um, but the M30 Mustang, in my opinion, is far better for taking out infantry. So what I have on my air-to-ground setup is the M30 Mustang, which is mediocre against aircraft, unless you get, like, right on them, then it's pretty good, and then the rocket pods. So the biggest thing to get with the rocket pods is get your ammo up. Get your ammo up and get the infrared. Infrared optics, get the first, like, two levels of ammo, because that's only 11 search, then get your infrared, and then get your additional levels of ammo. And you're going to want to max the ammo up. I haven't maxed it quite yet. And then you're going to want to get your reload speed up eventually. Though, honestly, this is such a minor upgrade. Because it's only 3%, 6%. You're going to hardly notice those reload times. So, anyway. So, my air to ground then. As far as my other certs for my air to ground, I would recommend getting the Scout Radar. And the idea here is that you are staying uh, if you're going to be doing air to ground you're going to be staying basically on our half of the front lines you don't want to be going on to the enemy half of the front lines because you're probably just going to get shot down by other aircraft so for that reason you may not need decoy flares though decoy flares can be great for basically getting rid of the lock-ons that the enemy has so you fly around basically with your air to ground utilizing either the breaker rockets infrared or your M30 Mustang infrared finding infantry and tank targets and taking them out and the idea is that you're not fighting in big huge dog fights with this build because you're probably going to get destroyed with it and the M30 Mustang is just not going to do that much damage for you it's okay in air to air combat but it's not nearly as good as a Vortec or an air to air missiles in general so then for defense, uh, this is where I would say the composite armor and the nanite auto repair are both going to be potentially superior than the vehicle stealth. Um, the nanite auto repair allows you to basically take a little bit of damage and it'll automatically repair. Where and the composite armor obviously reduces uh, damage from firearms, which they buffed tremendously. So, like one round of magazine from like just an engineer's rifle is going to take your aircraft down to like by about a third of its health. So you don't want to uh, get shot by aircraft, uh, anti, just like normal infantry fire because it actually does a lot of damage now. So this actually helps reduce that a little bit. But more importantly, it prevents burster maxes from just taking you out like instantly. So the reducing flak damage by 30% at, th at, at the top level, that's actually pretty awesome for preventing burster maxes and anti-air turrets from taking you out while you're hovering because oftentimes if you're hovering there, they can kill you before you can get off to speed and break line of sight. So, anyway, composite armor is uh, what I would probably ultimately build on my air-to-ground setup, but I haven't done that yet. 
And finally, the performance slot, the hover stability airframe is probably where you want to go as far as the air to ground. The only reason why I say probably is because the dogfighting airframe actually allows your you to turn faster uh, left and right just using the A and D key. Otherwise, you have to turn your aircraft completely to the side, pitch up or pitch down to change your aim and to go for an infantry target that's a little bit further. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fly past it. Dogfighting airframe basically allows you to make minor adjustments quicker, like just using your A and D keys, which allows you to aim at your infantry targets much more effectively. So if you're going after tanks and, and infantry, dogfighting airframe actually can be really useful. Um, again, the, the Razor High Speed airframe would only be useful in the sense that it allows you to get away a little faster if you're doing air to ground. So. Anyway, that's the builds that you could potentially go. Let's. Uh, I'm going to talk about the appearance really quick. I think the only thing that is notable is potentially the camo. I've got three uh, vehicle camos unlocked. I've got the Rocky, Tung Rocky Tundra, Sandy Scrub, and African Forest. Uh, I recommend the Rocky Tundra if possible because it allows your aircraft to basically blend in with the sky a little bit more. So uh, that would be the only reason that I would recommend that. And then I've also got the Tiger Fins upgrade, which just adds some cool fins to the aircraft. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this loadouts guide. It's The Reaver is a surprisingly complex vehicle to fly, and I'm going to be making a complete series of videos on it, including, you know, basically highlighting uh, my strategies in the air for killing ground targets, air targets, tanks, um what's the different abilities like using the you know gotta go fast build along with the air to air build versus you know the air to ground build and uh i guess one build i didn't mention just yet is the hybrid build which combines the vortex with the uh, breaker rocket pods and this basically allows you to have be somewhat effective in the air and then also be effective on the ground uh with a little bit of splash damage and being the ability to take out tanks very quickly from behind. Basically, breaker rockets allow you to, you know, kill tanks in about eight rockets if you're hitting them directly on on the back. And uh, I will be bringing you guys more videos uh, very soon. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, it helped increase your knowledge of the game and the Reaver. The Reaver is a very complicated aircraft to fly and to really do well out to maximize its potential. And uh, I'm just going to try to help you guys do that. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to be making lots of videos, uh, including for each class, you know, each vehicle probably, uh, eventually when I get there. And I, I'm really loving Planetside 2. I uh, hope you guys are too. Don't forget to subscribe for more Planetside 2 videos. I also post other gaming videos to my channel, but uh, right now I'm just pretty much playing Planetside 2, but I will be playing some other ones. Um, but anyway, I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep bomb fragging. <laughs> Look at this! Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm recording it. Wait, it's falling. It just fell to the ground. What the? Is there anyone in it? It's it's I. It, <laughs> yeah, I just record that. That's hilarious.